This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Though I know I should be wary, still I venture someplace scary. Ghostly haunting I turn loose. Beetlejuice! 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 <laughs> hey there, kids! It's the world's leading bio-exorcist, the ghost with most of himself, Beetle! Let's take a look at our last installment of Bob Showine, Mad Monster Party! It's Bob Show time! You know those dumb little puppet shows your mom makes you watch every Christmas? The same people who made those things got together and made a Halloween movie, starring the greatest monsters in history. It used to be a big deal when maybe two or three famous monsters shared the screen, but all of them? Oh my god, this is going to be the scariest movie ever! We open on some tracking shots, snaking their way through a dense jungle island, which for the time are actually pretty impressive. You wouldn't see camera moves like this again until the Nightmare Before Christmas came along. It's just kind of sad that the best animation that we're going to see in this movie is spent on the camera. And honestly, the set designs in this movie are pretty cool. Quite a step up from Santa Claus's castle from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, am I right? We meet Baron Von Frankenstein, voiced by and designed to look like Boris Karloff, conducting his latest experiment. So he's created a more effective way of exploding ravens. I'm sure that'll come in handy for later. Meaning what? Oh, nothing. Ha ha ha, quoth the raven, nevermore. Fuck you! Because blowing up ravens is such a scientific milestone, he sends out a bunch of invitations via carrier bats to monsters all over the world so they can have a... mad monster... party? I never thought a movie title could be confused, but there we go. You'll also notice that while the credits go by, the movie throws random comic book sound effects at us. Because if the old Batman show could throw sound effects into its fight scenes, why shouldn't this movie throw sound effects into its titles? Wait, what? We then meet this guy named Felix Flanken. I think he's supposed to be the hero, but he's a total pussy, so I'm sure we'll be the real hero of the film any time now. Flanken! <laughs> Felix? Well, take it out of my pay, Mr. Cronkite. Pay? Ooh, what pay? You have two more months to work for me for nothing before you're even as it is. There are people waiting at the lunch counter. Someone is browsing through the paperback books. We've got a whole rack full of those feeble fetchers to unload, and you're wasting your time in the pharmacy department. What am I not paying you for, Felix? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Cronkite. What would you like me to do first? He's asking him that question while on his knees in front of this guy. Well, that's definitely a pleasurable sensation. <laughs> by the way, this magazine rack has Playboys just sitting out waiting for anyone to come by and browse through them. Why don't they do that anymore? Felix gets his own invitation to the party, sent through the mail if you can believe it, pointing out how be the witness to a scientific first. Maybe it's a serum they can jab with this guy to make him the slightest bit more likable. He jump back to Frankenstein's castle, where we see the big guy himself getting an eyeful of this red-headed breast delivery system. Boobs good. <laughs> Both the monster's mate, aka the Bride of Frankenstein, ain't too keen on the monster committing the horrible crime of having eyes. Do you forget the last time you had a roving eye? I kept it in a jar for a week. <laughs> 
Don't give me any of your back mumble, you, you, you monster. Oh, you're different. I knew it wouldn't be the same, that you'd play a different game, cause you're different. <laughs> you're different. Remember when songs used to have a point to them? Those were some good old days. And I get that we want to show off our special celebrity voice here by making the character look like Phyllis Diller, but these other monsters look pretty close to their iconic counterparts. Why didn't they do her up to make her look more like the Bride of Frankenstein? Phyllis Diller as a puppet is just wrong. After she's done appreciating how different he is, we jump back to the doctor as he explains to his gravity-defying assistant, Francesca, uh, I mean, uh, Francesca, <laughs> that he's going to retire and hand down everything he has to Felix, his only living relative. I've grown a little tired of this horror business. Come on, you're the only guy in Hollywood to actually thrive from being typecast in your horror films. I would kill for that kind of fame. Please let me kill for that kind of fame. I shall turn over all my secrets to Felix, including my last great one, and then present him to the convention as my successor. One o'clock. The clock says seven o'clock, it chimes six times, and he somehow gets one o'clock out of that. Obviously, it's a clock that requires math. Oh, I do hope you like Felix Flanken when you meet him. I want you two to be friends. Felix Flanken. Like him? I love him to pieces. We then cut to the SS Herring, which all the monsters have to board from all over the world, because I guess that's the only boat that's kind of sort of going in the direction of Frankenstein's Island. Could you tell me the fare to the Isle of Evil? That'll be a hundred bucks, and with your fancy cape and tuxedo and all, I think you could afford it. Considering the dilapidated condition of my wallet, I mean, your ship, I think I had better fly. My eyes are playing tricks on me. Did you see what I think I saw, Captain? If I saw what you think you saw, I'd say we were both going batty. <laughs> and come on! You're Dracula, man! The conversation should have gone something like, That'll be a hundred bucks. Actually, I think I'll be getting on for free. Actually, I think you'll be getting on for free. They also let Felix on board, free of charge, probably because they think he's some kind of giant living ventriloquist dummy or something. That is scary. Oh, excuse me, sir. Sir? Uh, ma'am? Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but I can't see a thing without my glasses. Oh, let me help you with your fur piece. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the world's first animated fluffer! Oh, let me help you with your fur piece. <laughs> oh, madam, I'm terribly sorry. I, I hope I didn't offend you. Oh, don't go. Oh, I can't stand a woman crying. I'll have to get an extra pair of glasses out of my luggage. Oh, oh I'm sorry, but I lost my glasses and can't see a thing. <laughs> I've heard that one before. Hey, what a fizz now. This is a cool. <clears throat> he also meets Dr. Jekyll, as well as his better half. Well, Dr. Jekyll, are you all right? My, my goodness, you look awful. Are you sure you're not seasick, uh, Dr. Jekyll? Hide, hide, hide. <laughs> Hide? You want me to hide? Well, if you want to play games, you must be feeling better. Uh, but you certainly don't look it. Okay, I'll, I'll hide, and you'll see if you can find me. Hey, great. Now we know how to get rid of Felix whenever he's annoying you. Oh, hey, Felix. Want to play hide-and-seek? Yeah, okay, there you go. Anyway, you were saying... They finally reached the Isle of Evil. Hey, I got a summer home there! But the monsters had to get there on their own. <laughs> Oh, 
Now, friends, you'll discover who was the original Batman. <laughs> Joke's on you. The original Batman's dead. Oh, I made myself sad. Frankenstein waits for all these monsters to arrive, but one monster he hopes to never see again is simply called It. He orders his head zombie, whose name is Yetch, I guess, to lead the charge of defending the island from It. But Yetch has other things on his mind. Oh, Francesca, you beautiful, adorable, lovable creature. How much I've wanted to touch you. Take your hands away from me. <whistles> you creep. I get the feeling I'm not supposed to identify with this guy more than Felix, but eh, what are you gonna do? Do you really think that it would dare to come here uninvited? I don't know. It is capable of anything. Yeah, spoiler alert, it doesn't officially enter into this movie. We got all this build-up leading up to a nice big letdown. You know, like the real it! <laughs> <laughs> so the monsters show up from all over the world within seconds of each other. How convenient! Whatever he's drinking, I'll have it with ginger. Fang, don't you have any cooth? <laughs> she still got a better laugh than Jared Leto. Then we get a scene in the kitchen where Chef Mafia Machiavelli tells Yetch what'll be on the menu. It literally serves no purpose other than just listing off names of silly foods. It's a my own chef's salad. <laughs> the Mafia Machiavelli special. I make it with a poison ivy, a toad stools, and a poison of berries. <laughs> It's a good, no? <laughs> I got a three kinds of dressings that I go with. Arsenic, a cyanide, and this one, you get a big bang at it, yet. What is it? A nitro a glycerine. <laughs> I make a joke, you know? <laughs> no. No, not really. And I complimented the set design earlier, but what's up with this giant stove back there? The best kind of soup is the kind that I can't reach. And for the main course, I make a boar's head, a roast vulture, and a mince hyena casserole. <laughs> he, you gotta try the hyena casserole. I know I just wrote the scene off as being completely pointless, but is it wrong for me to be curious about what hyena tastes like? Yes! Yes, it is. Ew. And like with Lex Luthor in the Legion of Doom, of course it's an ordinary human who is the leader of all these monsters. After all, what's the most deadly and evil of all of God's creations? It turns out it's man. I have the secret to the formula which can completely destroy all matter. Except for glass test tubes, apparently. He announces to the party that he'll be retiring and naming his successor tomorrow, but he doesn't say who it is. Then, after a pointless rock number about the mummy of all people... Psst. Come. Psst. I must talk to you. Alone. Out on the balcony. Excuse me, Wolfie. Well, I think romance is calling. Time for me to tap that ass. She tells Dracula that if he kills Felix, she'll be Frankenstein's next in line, then she'll share Frankenstein's secrets with him. So he agrees, and when a secret plot involving betrayal, murder, and the Prince of Darkness is hatched, the natural thing to do is break out into a ragtime number. It's a time to shine, yeah. A turn in line. Everybody gets one chance in life. One chance in life. To make their dreams come. Shine. I love how Dracula tries to twirl her around, but he just can't with these puppets being the size that they are. The monster's mate overhears the conversation, and the monster saves her before Dracula can do her in. Well, there's only one thing to do when you're in such a predicament. 
turn into a bat, a wolf, or maybe mist so you can escape. Help! Help! Or you can cry for help like a little bitch, that works too. This soon spills over into the rest of the party, and everything is officially off the hook. No wonder you're invisible. You're ugly and revolting and disgusting and... What a fright. Best monster rally I ever attended. <laughs> oh, lost your head here. Yeah. Wait till you see what you're missing. Anyone? Well, we get a million sound effects during the opening titles, but no punch sound effect when it actually calls for it! Lame. After the party comes to an end, not everyone is as hungover as these empty bottles might imply. What was that? Full moon. Poor dog. We can't help it. We'll never sleep tonight. Well, that ought to do the trick. So the invisible man just carries a bunch of surgical masks on him? You do a lot of impromptu surgery, Mr. Man? <laughs> Show of hands, who else wants to see an invisible man who's into unnecessary surgery? For some reason, the hunchback of Notre Dame has been all chummy with the mummy, and he wraps his head up to drown out the mummy's snoring. While forgetting that wrapping up his ears was kind of a point. The next day, Felix makes it to the island. Give me a hand, Felix. I don't know how I trap my... I think you two should greet each other on dry land. <laughs> Thank you, Francesca. Felix... Francesca, my secretary. Hello, and thanks for the help of the water. I don't know what happened. I just slept and... Uh, let's get into some dry clothes, Felix. Are you sure you want to give your secrets to this little pansy, Dr. Frankenstein? I mean, give it to the monster. At least he can walk. Francesca invites Felix out to a picnic, where a handful of monsters are lying in wait for him. Hey, boy. Hey. Oh, oh there, there, boy. Oh, nice fella. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, all right, go, go fetch, boy. There's a good boy. Unfortunately, his main character shields keep him perfectly safe. Ugh. What's that? Cheese. Oh, but with mayo. I don't like mayo. Oh, but what's this? Cheese without mayo. Oh, but it's on wheat toast. What's this? Oh, or this? Oh, man, maybe this. It's pretty bad when Mel Brooks gives us a more dignified Dracula. I must move the coffin or the chandelier. They get back to the castle, and while Frankenstein feeds his man any plant what looks like an old ball sack that he had lying around, he explains to Felix that he's next in line to be the head of the monsters. I may have the blood for the job, but I sure don't have a stomach for it. I know, my boy, but consider this. Got to catch them all. Seriously, look at these things! He got a Ratata, a Psyduck, a Talo, a Caterpie, a Zubat, a Weedle, a Bahiam, a Whooper. The Pokemons were created by Frankenstein! You know way too much about this shit. I know! It's like My Little Pony! How do I know what these things are without ever watching the show? I got no idea! You gotta stay one step ahead. Stay one step ahead. This song has got nothing to do with what we're talking about. Keep your head out of the sand. Pick the apple that's ripe, or the very next day it's going to fall in someone else's hand. I'm sorry, but I think you got the lyrics mixed up. Shouldn't it be, 
pick the apple that's ripe. Keep your head out of the sand. That way it can rhyme with someone else's hand. No, just sing it as is. All right, I can do that. We later find Francesco wanting to come up with a new plan to deal with Felix. But Dracula thinks he's better off getting the secrets himself with the monster's help. Why should we share the secrets with you? If you're not around, the monster will get them, and we'll make much better partners for Dracula. Better partners? Not around. We can't let her go, babies. She'll go straight to Dr. Frankenstein. You can't outsmart me. You'll never get... How did that happen? She escaped. We must stop her before she tells the Baron or he'll turn us into erector sets. Like those erector sets on the wall that we're not going to show you. Ha 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 ha. Wait, she takes a trap door which makes her fall through the floor, and then she ends up in Frankenstein's lab which is in the highest room in the tallest tower? Space is warped and time is bendable. Francesca writes a letter to someone we don't know, and the outcome of her sending this letter never comes out. Dracula and the monster decide that the only thing they can do is follow Francesca down the trap door. Now just a second, I... Remember, I'm a cow! Remember that you're a vampire and you can turn into a bat and just fly down! Why don't you do that, you loser?! Francesca saves her bacon by diving into the moat around the castle, and she just so happens to bump into Felix, who's been fishing this whole time. Everything was fine until you came to this island. Now you've ruined everything and I hate you, I hate you, I hate you! <laughs> well, Francesca, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. <laughs> Fra Fra Francesca, Francesca. Oh, the shock. <laughs> You're hysterical. Calm down. I, <laughs> I hate to do this. Oh, oh, Felix. Oh, you're not mad? Oh, Felix. I think you're still hysterical. Oh, Felix. You're wonderful. I've been such a fool. <laughs> Uh oh. For all of Flanken's pharmaceutical know how, he still can't get it up. But don't worry, a little editing can fix that up. There you go. <laughs> so she sings about her undying love for him, all because he smacked her in the face a couple of times. Girl's got some cakes. Really? Is she Harley Quinn's grandmother or something? You better start moving again. Uh, I think I was moving again. I thought that was the whole point. The monsters band together to take Felix out of the picture. So they capture Francesca, and just when it looks like they have Felix cornered, they get greeted by... a sea monkey? Remember when I said that it never officially makes it into this movie? Well, we see its name in the opening credits, and we do not see a credit for King Kong or any other ape, so I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be it. Told you it was going to be a letdown. Anyway, he lumbers his way to Frankenstein's castle when this happens. into teenage girls several centuries younger than me, and even I'm creeped out by that. We then find Yitch getting all gropey with Francesca. Again, I know I'm not supposed to side with this guy more than I am Felix, but what can I say? Picking girls against their will is kind of my thing. <laughs> She's a little bit nervous. Uh, maybe I should answer for her, okay? <laughs> I'm Lydia Dietz and I'm of sound mind. The man next to me is the one I want. You ask me, I'm answering. Yes, I love that man of mine. <laughs> Yet you wretch, don't touch me. Touch you. <laughs> At long last, I am going to kiss you. Oy vey, that Francesca is something. She can fly me to the moon with her kisses. For some reason, her kisses feel like severe rectal trauma. Now that it's got Francesca all to herself, our brave hero rises to the occasion and... Does absolutely nothing while Frankenstein and his zombies get in a bunch of airplanes to deal with it themselves. One thing is for sure. If I ever get out of this 
Mess alive, I'll never hack and chop in a jungle again. Whiny man. All right, all right, you. Put her down. It's me you want. They cut this from the final film, but you should have seen that monkey's reaction to Boris's picture. Oh, yeah. Frankenstein is captured too, but he still has his formula for destroying matter. And now you, you overgrown chimpanzee, you've caused me anguish for the very last time. And all of you with your jealousies and your hates, if you wanted my bile, you'd kill my nephew for it. Well, now you shall see the Baron von Frankenstein is not one to cross. True, you won't see it for too long a time, but for one second, oh boy. Frankenstein out. So yeah, he drops the formula, and the entire island is blown up just as Felix and Francesca make their escape. I know it's wrong, but I have this tremendous urge to sing all Lang Syne. Your only living relative just blew up his entire island into suicide bombing! What would happen if you went up to someone whose home was lost in a hurricane? Well, I have this sudden urge to sing Singing in the Rain. Felix tries to brighten the mood by telling Francesca that they'll be married once they get back home, but like any babe would, Francesca just cries when she hears that. Actually, plot twist, Francesca is really a robot made by Frankenstein. Where other women have a heart, I have a spring that will unwind. Where other women have lungs, I've got a pump that runs on batteries which will run out. Where other women have elbows and knees, I have metallic joints that will one day grow rusty and stiffen. I'm just a machine of hundreds of parts will eventually wear out. Well, Francesca... Well, Francesca... None of us are perfect, are perfect, are perfect, are perfect. It was on this day in 1967 that a young M. Night Shyamalan's life would never be the same. So that was Mad Monster Party. It's kind of dumb, but hey, what can I say? It's a lot of fun! All the animation is kind of blah, the set design and the atmosphere are pretty effective. It's a little bit of a letdown that these monsters aren't as scary as they should be, and the jokes are corny as hell, but this is the kind of movie that you're just not supposed to take too seriously. So dig up a few friends, grab some drinks, and enjoy the laughs, whether they're actually funny or just campy and stupid. Thanks for watching, and have a happy Halloween! As for me, I'm ready for a little mischief and mayhem. Can you join me, Lids? You know it, BJ. See you later, kids! A strange tune seems to be playing for you. Could you be someone's invention? So unreal as you feel tonight. Did you sell your soul to the devil at that monster party last night? Tell me, baby, tell me, tell me, please If you made a date with the devil, not me If you know my fate, honey, level with me The cold night brings out the creature in you 
Get yourself a little Applejack. <laughs> Subscribe. Like. Follow. Comment.